Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Tree for sponsoring this week's video. Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for more One Piece, the anime. In the last episode, we had a philosophical face-off and a physical one between Luffy and Koro, and it was a... Honestly, it was a great little two-parter that we were watching together last week, and I had a blast with it, man. I'm really loving this arc, and I know this seems to be a lot of people's least favorite. Obviously, at the end of the day, there's so many arcs that's going to be within the show. Something's got to be at the bottom, but at least let's go to, to show, at least from for me, that if this is at the bottom for most people and is still pretty darn solid, that just gives me a lot of faith for what will be coming in the future for a lot of these other storylines and stuff that's going to come as we continue this journey. I, I Again, I've been loving the absolute shit out of this show. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be diving into episode 17 and then moving immediately on to episode 18. Once again, doing another two-parter for you guys. You know, it's the holidays. I got a little more time on my hands at the moment, so it's not that big of an inconvenience right now to do this. So we'll just kind of keep it up for the time being, and who knows, by this point, it might just end up being routine, you know? <laughs> Fuck it, I don't know. But for right now... It's not too big of a stretch at the moment for me to do these, so it's not that big of a, a hindrance at this point, unlike before <laughs> when we started this. But with that all said, guys, let's go ahead and strap in. If you want to see the full-length reaction, check it out over on Patreon, or if we got Marvel Channel, get you access as well. It will be in watch-along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up with the time code summary so reaction the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind-scenes footage, and try to make it worth your while, so you're going to be support the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this reaction, at least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already, because it really does go a long way with helping these videos out. And with that all said and out of the way, let's get ready to hop into episode 17. Here we go. Ooh. He just straight dodged that one. You slowing down? <laughs> okay, he, he did. Has a lot of unnecessary movements. Now, somebody I did see in the comments for the last video that it's meant to be out of the bag attack. You know, like letting the cat out of the bag, which would fit in with this whole theme. So maybe that was like a a subtitle or translation error. Makes way more sense when you look at it like that. Whoa. Uh, oh, he got him. And maybe he is slowing down. Getting exhausted or Luffy's finally adapting. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, are they gonna start rooting for Luffy? <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh, hell yeah. Teamwork. <laughs> they are. Kick his ass. <laughs> oh. God damn. And he's down, man. Or he seems like he's down. Yeah, dude, he's out. He's out. Monkey D. Luffy, now my own state, Umikara Nigerio, and a Kaizokuni, or a Makeruaka Nezaro. Kaizokuga, now my own Serzokiwa, Shinutoki, I get a Jubunda. Luffy, a party, Kikane, another. Or no, now my own, he show Boetero. Oh, or a Kaizoku, and in our Otokoda. Oh. 
。ああ。お疲れ様。うん。さすがなんとも。それだけやられたら倒れるのね。さっき何起こってたの。これ、あいつら嫌いだ。あいつら間違ってる。ああ。仲間ってのは。あんなもんじゃねえ。海賊なんて。あんたが考えてるような綺麗なもんじゃないわ。キャプテンクロの方がスタンダードなんじゃない。肉が食いて<laughs> we're, we're just gonna leave Django behind? Or is he dead? <laughs> Imagine he's not. Oh. Wow.Kyoseo.Ashimega.Yet.Dekimas.Sorega.Ichiba.Muranotamini.Narunara.Kaya.Oh.I.Get.Like.Yeah.We.We.Fixed.Everything's.Fine.Why.Bother.Why.
I'm sorry. D oh, d d okay, well, d good thing you're leaving that house now. Gah. Let's go and be a little drafty now. <laughs> Luffy's fucking face. Shoshoフリー方ですが、これは私がデザインしました船で。ありがとう。踏んだり蹴ったりだな。至れり尽くせりだ。I thought maybe that was a subtitle fuck up for a second, but Zoro caught him with that. Good job. 何やってんだ、あいつ。とりあえず止めとくか。このコースは船に直撃だよ。ナイス。ああ。グレートファーストデイ。今度はこの村に来る時はよ。嘘より<笑><笑> No, no, you don't. <laughs> that is not how that works, dude. What if we start lying every day? クラハドールのことですかうん。本当はウソップ君を引き止めたかったことですかああ。私前に村の人から彼の子供の頃の話を聞いたことがあります。ウソップ君の父親がこの村を飛び出して間もなく彼は母親をもう亡くしているのです。
you get 20 snacks from Japan's local artisan shops that are working in traditional methods of snack making to help bring these to your home. Each one of these also comes with a unique tableware set for you to add to your collection, as well as a tea to pair with a lot of the snacks that have been chosen to be included with your box. Every month, each one of these boxes comes with its very own unique theme. This month, of course, is going to be celebrating the new year. With Tokyo Tree, you're going to be getting a lot of the more popular New Year's snacks that come around that year. Likewise, Soccer Co. is partnering up with the city of Hiroshima to help bring snacks from the region right into your home and tackle a lot of those notes and flavors that just kind of get you in the mood of the season and just settle you right into this beautiful historic town. Each box comes with a booklet to help break down all of the contents within. So if you're not exactly sure what you're about to bite into, you can always bust open one of these and it'll tell you all kinds of little key details about it such as if you have any common food allergies, if it's gluten-free, if it's vegetarian, it'll tell you all kinds of little details about the snack. Also where it's from, its traditions of the region. One of the key things I enjoyed about the uh, Soccer Co. one is once again, every month, uh, my list of places I wanna visit just keeps on growing. But with that said, let's bust into some of these boxes and try some of these snacks. We're gonna start off with Tokyo Treat, and the first thing I wanted to grab out of this is gonna be this Good Luck Taiyaki. All right, this is what we got. Mmm, why cannot place this texture? I know this texture, and I, I can't place it. It's got a soft, flaky kind of crust around it um, with this chocolate core, like I've had with previous snacks from these companies, is the chocolate is never overpowering. Chocolate for me, almost always kind of comes off a little too strong, in, especially in quantities where like it's like this. Next up, I'm gonna try these Nagoya donuts. Mm. It's very soft, very pillowy. And it's got this sweet red bean center. Let's try these agamochi bites. Agamochi is basically deep fried mochi. It's kind of got like, it's a kind of like a crispy soy sauce coated little crisp. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I love that. It's got a sweet kind of soy flavor to it. Again, it's not overpowering. It's light enough. It's got this crisp, nice crunch. And still, there's so many more snacks in here, man. <laughs> Look at all that, dude. Let's bust out the Sakura Co. So I want to try this uh, New Year's Senbei. Mmm. It's kind of got a similar texture to those. There's like I don't I don't even know what you call them. I know they're like rice crackers. I think it's like the rice crackers. It's kind of got a similar texture to that. It's a little crunchier than the ones I've had before, but it's got this sweet kind of like also savory kind of combination to it. It's just light. This is a delightful light little snack, especially coming out of the winter months and stuff like that. Definitely need to wash that one down though. And like I said before, Soccer Co. every month comes with its own tea. This time we got Atsuki tea, which is actually made with roasted Atsuki beans. So let's give this one a taste. Oh, dude, every one of these teas has been so relaxing and calming. And again, because these are kind of curated, a lot of your teas that you're going to be getting with these packages and a lot of the snacks that you're getting as well are all kind of chosen to kind of pair with one another. So this tea, this flavor, it just has this sweet kind of muted taste that just kind of relaxes some of the stronger flavors that are left over in some of these uh, sweeter snacks. Mm. Oof. And like I said before, Soccer Co. boxes come with an exclusive dishware piece, and that can kind of vary. You know, one month we had chopsticks, another we had a little, you know, ceramic dish. This month we have this Neko themed Furushiki carrying cloth to wrap up your snacks, bring them along for your outdoor outing in a cute little compact little way. And again, we've barely scratched the surface with the contents of these boxes, and if you're curious at all, I highly recommend these. If you are a snack fiend, even if it's not for yourself, these things do make a great, wonderful gift for yourself, a loved one, family members, whatever. Anybody who's got a little bit of a sweet tooth, these are a great gift to make for them as well. And if you're interested at all, you can check out the links in the description of this video and use code OMNI, that's O-M-N-1, for $5 off your first purchase of either one of these boxes. Again, 
I highly recommend these. I've been getting these things for months now, and I always look forward to it. Check them out. It helps support the channel. And thank you again, Soccer Co. and Tokyo Tree for sponsoring this video. With that all said, let's go ahead and hop into episode 18. Here we go. Oh my god. <笑><笑>お前たちな、ちょっとは人のことに関心持ってよ。できた。うん。ミラ、海賊機だ。ナイス。海賊機は死の象徴、恐怖の象徴なんだぜ。確かに恐怖を感じるけどね。あんた。うん。ルール。忘れてもらっちゃ困るぜ。天才画家を。天才画家。いや、when <笑> Well, already then. There we go. We're all set. Storm rolling in. Oh, um, doesn't look very natural to me. The legendary treasure island. Well, alrighty then. So is it just surrounded by a permanent storm? <laughs> I love Luffy, man. この島のどこかに途方もない宝が眠ってると言われているのよ。今まで数多くの海賊が上陸したけれど、誰もが恐怖のあまり宝を探す前に逃げ帰ったとか。ある海賊は夜中に突然顔がイノシシに変わってしま
悪魔の身を食った昔海賊だった頃噂は聞いたな海賊だった頃ちち違うそんな昔のことは懐かしなんかないいや I'm sorry Sorry, what'd you say there? Used to be a pirate, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Somebody's story's falling apart here. Jesus! <laughs> God. Ooh. But they surprise me, so I don't like them. This guy is terrible at stealth. What the hell is. What is. What is that? Oh, that's him. What the fuck? Well, okay. Carabaco ni smatta ningen nante hajimete mita yo. Hako iri musuko nano ka, omae? Ah, chisa na koro kara taisetsu na obotchan de. Nawage aru ka? Ora mo 20 nen mo kono shiba de hako ni haitta mama nan da. Tatta hitori de. For 20 years, he's been stuck on this island and in that box. <laughs> yeah, you, you missed a little bit. A boxed or sheltered son. And here he goes on that again. Oh, wow. That's not exactly how that works, but okay. Mm. I can't wait till we finally get there, man. Other than the stories we've heard, I've got no, like, frame of reference for it. A dream and within a dream beyond a legend. <laughs> um, well, he maybe he probably doesn't. He probably hasn't seen a mirror in a in a in a while. So. And then he fell into the chest and got stuck, and then they left him. No! <laughs> Wow. あれは俺のだ。うん。間違いない。それはおっさんのだ。外門さん分かったわ。その宝あなたの代わりに取ってきてあげるわ。お前海賊専門の泥棒だよな。あんたし。Do you though? Do you though? Is that a cow turtle? 
久しぶりだここへ来るのはついにこの時が来たか I mean, hey, he never, he never even had the opportunity or chance to see if there was anything even in the chests. He just saw chests. They could just be, they could be just as empty as the one he got stuck in, for all we know. What the fuck is going on? ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがとうよ。ありがと
his stamina outlasted Kuro's. That was the implication that I kind of got. Uh, the other way I kind of read that as well was maybe Luffy was adapting and was finally able to kind of see him. But he did throw out that, what are you getting tired line? Or, and then once he was able to kind of see his pattern and see start to see him as he's hopping and zip zooming around, he was able to latch onto him and then locked him down into one position and gave him the good old gum gum bell right to the head conking him out but he's alive he's still alive i mean he was alive in the live action as well he rode away by himself in his lonesome but here he's ba basically been outed his uh and just cast back to his crew whom he was going to kill and they're just gonna i guess run off with him so i'm wondering if uh, does he if he ever comes back and I, I just the state of his crew, especially considering they started rooting for Luffy. I was like, hey, if we root for this straw hat guy, he maybe we won't die. <laughs> but I wouldn't be shocked if Koro killed them all and just uh, got a whole new crew once he woke up. Django got left behind on the island altogether. Uh, or hell, for all we know, maybe maybe he died. <laughs> maybe he's dead. We did get that little shot of his glasses launching off of his head and then the the lens is shattering so who knows either way we got confirmation that at least in this and again this is one of the things like I, there are some things that i think the live action cleaned up a little bit I, I think a lot of the kaya stuff was a little neater in the live action a little more grounded made a little more sense you know obviously in this like she just like the next day she was just fine spurred up and i know they kind of touched on it a little bit i've seen some people even like kind of push back against like this is why watching the live action first ruins people's experience talking about this poison and all that and it's honestly the poison makes the most logical sense because like they played it off like her her bed and riddenness her coughing her sneezing her fevers all these things were psychosomatic while depression can weaken your immune system it can't really bring that upon like that unless she's like just completely fallen into delusion at that point like because i even looked into this i was like trying to like kind of did a little bit of research myself as well around that i mean i'm someone who lives with constant depression the thing that really can wear down your immune system is lack of sleep anxiety your heart rate the way that your depression kind of disables your mind from doing normal processes through that. So if your body's not getting the energy it needs, if you're not resting enough, if you're not getting the nutrients you need, your immune system can weaken. You can become susceptible to other viruses, diseases, and stuff like that. You know, you basically can kind of cause yourself to become immunodeficient, which would make you susceptible to other illnesses and stuff like that. But for her to snap back the next day implies that that's not the case. So it implies that she was manifesting all of this mentally. And that's not typically how that goes. It's not outside the realm of possibility, but that's kind of why I I actually like the poison thing more because it does seem like something that Koro would do. He would forcibly bedridden her because if she gets up, if she does something her own, if she's able to, if she wasn't just so depressed in this, he wouldn't have had the control he needed. Like if he had doubled down and there was a combination of the two, that would give him a little bit more reassurance that his plan would work out in the end. So I did like that element of it, you know, because it was like a combination of the two that kept her in her home, that kept her bedridden, that kept her like that. It was this suppression so the Koro could keep his strings on her. This, there was a lot up in the air that could have even had that not been the case would have caused his plan to go a little awry. That aside, she had way more badass moments in this, like her standing up for herself despite everything and putting her life on the line and going out there and, you know, literally just face to face confronting him, pulling out that pistol and all that was really, really fun. It, it just showed the strength of her character a lot more than what we saw. And again, I'll touch back on this. Like there's some there's some good little moments with Usopp in the live action. But my God, did they sell him short the pride, the honor, the links that he went through for this town. A lot of that is just so, so much fleshed, more fleshed out here. And it's not even like it's a condensation of what happened with his role and his his beliefs and his values and all this that happened. It just got omitted completely. He just got played for that comedic relief. You know, there was that element of him like calling out to the, to the townsfolk. There was never this 
thing that he was doing it to liven up their lives. So we really just kind of dived into this this idea that he's hoping to manifest his father returning home. Like he's screaming to high heavens every day, pirates are here, pirates are here, in the hopes that one day it will be true and he'll just be reunited with his father again. But the townsfolk just kind of got annoyed with it. Obviously they they were endeared to it, they understood the situation, but they definitely, definitely tolerated it. There's so much, so many more layers to that that was baked into this. While that was revealed in this last episode to be that case, that he was also doing it for that manner, he was also doing that just, just kind of in this way to liven up their daily routine. And then we get to the actual villagers' perspectives of it. It's dawn, and they're like, where's Usopp? Like, they were actually, like, mildly concerned. They were even, like, geared up. The guy had his broom and everything ready to go. Like, it's on the clock. This is part of their daily routine is chasing him off. As mad as they are, it... It, it's just this thing that happens that gives them a little bit of energy and excitement in their life. So there's a lot of these different layers that are stacking onto this that just goes to show how, in a way, so, how selfless Usopp really is at his core. Is he a coward? Sure. And unlike in the live action, man, he stood his ground. He took beatings. Dude shouldn't even be standing right now after what he took from that hammer, to facing off with Django, to even trying to stop Kuro. He went like above and beyond to keep them from getting to Kaya. And it was so, so commendable. It was so inspiring. And then his relationship with his little Usopp pirates, it just adds a little bit more to his little whole Captain Usopp thing, which is fine in itself. You know, he told lies, he told stories all the time about being a captain out in the seas. He go off and he come back, even though he's obviously never left. He just has his little hole up in the island somewhere. But like that's, it just adds a little bit of uh, complexity to that as well. Because now that he's gone, now that he's choosing to leave, though, in it, hilariously, it does make me think exactly like his father, whom he's looking up to, and I'm just kind of curious about that. That's this read on it, cause like his his mother held no resentment for being completely abandoned. She's like, I'm proud to be married to him. That fuckface who just went off and left his wife and kid just to because he wanted to go off and just sail the seas with his bros. What the hell? And we're just all okay with this. And then that's that's the, that's a, just a normal regular thing that you should be proud of and. Go do your thing, honey. Never see me again. Like, never once came back. And she even told him, don't expect him to come back. Like, and then Usopp, all in her, like, don't, did the same thing. You know, fighting these pirates, teaming up with the Straw Hats and stuff like that to kind of save and defend this town, riled up that that thrill that it just got his, his blood pumping so much that he was like, all right, if I was going to ever do this, now is the time. So let me abandon my kids, <laughs> my village, hell, my crush to go off and do whatever. And you know, and Kaya, you know, she's like lying, lying hurts, lying's hard. And that little moment with Mary talking about how, he was like, what are you referring to Claude or? She's like, yeah, also that, but having to lie to 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 Usopp's face that she wants him to leave and stuff like that when she really wanted him to stay but she's not going to hold him back from his dream or anything like that it just again it adds a little bit of complexity to that relationship and it's just nice it's sweet but it's also hilarious but it's nice too that see that these kids are going to carry up his tradition and do the same thing every morning it's honestly really freaking sweet and again you know while he's a coward this 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 iteration of Usopp stood his ground fought and bled without hesitation. Well, a little hesitation. When it came down to it, he was more than willing to put himself in the middle of the fire to defend the village, defend Kaya, even defend Nami. Even when he couldn't move, offered to try to go get Zoro's swords when Nami took that move herself because obviously he was overexerting himself. It was just like Usopp. There was not a lot of that at all. It's just like, I hope there's more of that once we get into season two and stuff like that, because like he really, when we're looking at the characters, he definitely got the short end of the stick when it comes to why he was recruited. Here, it makes so much more sense because one, they they saw him go through all this stuff. In, in the live action, it's just like, yeah, we're three people. We need a fourth. You're kind of available. Want to come? That was, like, was it. There was nothing that he did in that arc that really screamed like, we need you on our crew. You know, his sharpshooter skills, while 
we had that display never really played into this the arc as a whole but again there's there's some fun stuff they did i love the stalking in the mansion i loved the way they brought koro to life i loved the fights i loved the aesthetic i love the the set i do like the mansion setting a little bit more than this this hill there's more contrast going on with the different rooms the locations and stuff like that and the way that they got to play with the environment and then we played with the foyer with the the stairs with Zoro fighting off against Butchie and I forget the other one's name. And then we had Zoro with the well. We just had a lot of tastes that they were balancing around in here where a vast majority of this was set between two identical looking hills. <laughs> so like that's the one, one other thing that I would kind of give that. Uh, overall though, I would much rather have had this character growth, I think. It's hard to do what they did in the limited amount of time that they had. So I get what the, the I get the cuts that they had to make. I just kind of wish in hindsight that they didn't cut out all the things that made Usopp like really endearing. These moments that really showed the value add that he brings to the crew, you know? That's that's kind of the only thing that I, I kind of lament about that, you know? I don't know. That's it. Not even lament. That's a, that's a little bit too harsh of a word. That I just kind of like would have liked to have seen them kind of touch upon in the live action going back into it but all in all again I'll, I'll i'll keep saying it the way they worked around everything was still masterfully done the amount of episodes that they had and still preserving a lot of those characterizations was still honestly really freaking well done and i, I don't want to undersell that at all but it's still like they, they the live action was still a master class in live action anime adaptations man i mean we just watched the yu yu haka show live action reacted to those five episodes and you know one piece condensed what 45 47 48 50 maybe at best episodes into eight episodes the yu yu haka show did 66 into five episodes while they put all that money into the budget everything looked clean the fights were phenomenal i'll give it that the fights were above and beyond any that i've seen in any other live action they they really captured what it's like to make a live action anime fight. But all of the characterization short, I think of Kurama and Kuwabara kind of got left on the burner when they condensed all of that in such a short span of time. I was like, we didn't have time to focus on any of the characters. So I'm just glad that even in with One Piece, though they had a shorter uh, range of episodes, but longer episodes to tell them in, it kind of was able to flow a little bit more. They did a good job at focusing on in on what matters the world and the characters. You know, while the fights might not be as flashy as, you know, what they did with the Yu Yu Hakusho stuff, at least they focused in on the character aspects of it. Because if you don't give a shit about the characters outside of what you brought in with you, because I, I hadn't seen One Piece and they won me over on those characters without me ever having any kind of connection to these characters at all before. Whereas I know these characters, I can project things that they don't have to tell me because I know the story from, from Yu Yu Hakusho and I can bring that with me, they failed at getting me to care about any of these characters short of Kuwabara and Kurama. And Hiei is my favorite character in the entire series. And they did next to nothing with him. <laughs> character wise, at least. I don't want to compare the two, but they're like the most two recent examples of, you know, these high budget, like live action anime adaptations, especially if we're talking series formats. For me, I definitely prefer the One Piece uh, live action adaptation just because it focused on the important elements of the story, the characters, and the world. While as much as I would have loved some anime style over the top badass fights like what we got in the Yu Yu Hakusho live action, I would sacrifice a little bit of that just for some damn characterization. Anyway, that all aside, We've wrapped up Serp Village. We have a ship. We are setting sail with our crew. We can go anywhere. We can just set sail and, hey, if we see an island off in the horizon, hey, maybe we can go check that out. I'm excited to see what comes next, so thank you all for joining along this journey so far with me. I've really appreciated it, but what did you guys think of this arc? How do you feel about how this all wrapped up? How do you feel about all in all this has been represented in the live action? 
And what did you think of this little, this little reprieve episode, this little sidebar? Sound off the comments, let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry in the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full-length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you got a memorable channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, your course called Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake Contrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, and JoJo. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.